Hey guys, I figured I would do a little overview of this Red Komodo camera here and how the menu system works and how to get this uh, up and running. You know, maybe you have it on your next shoot and you want to know a little bit more about it or maybe you're thinking about purchasing this camera and you want to know how you navigate the camera. So this video is just for that. So first of all, when you boot up the camera, um, this is the screen that you will be greeted by. Um, there's a bunch of stuff here on the screen and of course it is a touch screen so you can control it um, by touching. The touch is not always great as you can see. These five buttons right here and the record button, those are pretty good touch screen options here. So first of all, let's start from the bottom row and we'll get to the top row because the bottom row is the most simple uh, row of these all. So first of all, you got your FPS. Now this FPS is always tied to uh, what resolution you're shooting at. So right now I got all the way from 40 FPS to 6.25 FPS. And if I want to go higher FPS than this, this camera can go higher, but I have to change my resolution. Now, uh, this FPS selection box here only gives you the FPS for the current resolution um, that you're filming. So if I were to go to menu and go to my project settings, and change my format from 6K 17 by 9, which is the full sensor, uh, to something like, um, let's say 5K 17 by 9. Now when I go back to this FPS selection, I have 48 frames per second, for example. So that's how you can change um, your frame rates all the way to 120 frame rates in 2K. The ISO, uh, it's really simple and straightforward. You can go from 250 ISO all the way up to 12,800 ISO. Um, but uh, you, when you're working with the red files, I think you can go as low as 25 ISO. So you can go significantly lower on uh, the actual files in Resolve uh, than you can in camera here. So keep that in mind. But again, the ISO is more of just uh, viewing brightness sort of um, tool on the red cameras, not so much uh, having to do with exposure. Next up, we have our iris. Now I have a Sigma lens attached to this camera uh, with a Canon RF to EF adapter. Um, and that gives me um, focus control. And that gives me iris control as well. If I was, however, using lenses that don't support that, for example, some cinema glass on a PL mount with no electronic um, components, then I couldn't use this function. This would just be grayed out and it wouldn't even display it. Uh, so if your lens is electronically connected to your camera, you can change your aperture right here, um, just like any, okay, that's a, now, for example, this lens is not a 2.8 all the way through. So if I, to do take a zoom, it does change the F number here and it leaves it yellow. So you know it has changed uh, from the 2.8 that you set it yourself to. Um, and when you go back to the menu, you can be like, oh, I can only go to four and then it disappears. The option is no longer here to go back. Great, um, we got our shutter angle. I usually never touch this, but maybe you need to, maybe you have a flickering right light or something like that. You know, we can go all the way from one degree all the way to 360 degrees um, for all sorts of motion. But 180 is probably where you keep it most of the time. Now this next one, the white balance. This is, I actually fool around with this a lot because we're not set in white balance when we're shooting red. So I like to dial in, um, the look I want already from the white balance um, when I'm shooting on set. So I might change this around a lot um, when I'm shooting just to see how it looks in different white balances uh, with all the lighting. Of course, I try to balance it, but usually I'm at 5600 Kelvins anyway. Okay, so next we'll just be moving up on the screen here. So um, first of all, we got our traffic lights and our stop signs. Um, so if I click those, it goes over to um, exposure tools. Um, here we have a magnify button for your LCD and you can choose uh, how to view this with your finger. I almost never use that because the screen is so small, but you also have an option for SDI 
Um, I think it does control with your finger. I don't have my monitor plugged in right now because I didn't think I would need it. Um, but you get the point. Usually I just use the magnify option on my SDI. But if you want something like a higher resolution crop uh, on your SDI monitor, that could be something you want to use. Although you cannot set how much you want it to zoom in. It is a fixed zoom and it is the same as this guy right here. You have some peaking modes, you have edge, um, you have peaking and you have focus. There are also just different kind of peaking modes. I've never used them personally um, and neither has my AC. So not really something I have to think about too often, but they're there if you want to use them. On the down road, this is one I use quite often. Um, it has LCD guides, LCD tools. So if I turn on this LCD tools, you can see my exposure um, uh, false color is showing. So when I click this exposure thing, but if I don't have this LCD tools clicked, um, it's not going to show on my LCD, but it will show on my SDI if I have this SDI clicked. So those are things I use quite a lot. I usually love to have this exposure false color on this small monitor where I can just glance down and see what is the clipping point. Um, and then I'll just have a clean image on my monitor. So I think that's super helpful and I use these buttons a lot. Same with the tools, um, uh, same with the guides. If you want guides, like here I have a 16, uh, nine guide frame and center marker. I usually always just leave those on uh, and the guide frames, I can go change those to whatever I want. So yeah, I usually leave those on for both. So that's by just pressing the traffic lights. That's how you get into that menu. Um, and the traffic lights itself, you can see how to expose this camera. So right now, for example, we can see that we're pretty evenly exposed, but we've got um, detail loss on the shadows in all channels. Um, and you can see the severity of it um, down those. And if you click the center marker here, you can see the, the waveform uh, and how that correlates. I think exposing with these red cameras and these tools is a totally different um, ball game. So I think that's a thing for another video. I'm not going to be explaining too much on how that works. Okay, so next up, we've got the center screen. Um, it, of course, gives you time code. So time code is right there. It gives you the clip name of the last clip you shot and how long that clip was and the resolution and the quality. Uh, and frame rate of that clip. Cool. Um, next, you've got the audio panel here. Uh, you can choose whether you're using an internal microphone. Um, you can choose your headphone level here. This menu is clunky and it's not very nice. I don't really use this too much, um, to be honest. And that's fine. Okay, um, let's go back to this screen. Uh, believe it or not, there is more things here. Uh, obviously, you have your view there. But if you click this red button here, it takes you to where the menu button takes you. So it's the same button um, top left as the menu button. I don't ever use that pretty much. But if you click anywhere up on this panel here, it takes you to this menu, which is like kind of like at a quick glance, everything about your camera, which is super dope. I go here all the time. So um, here you can see how much is on the card, um, how much you got available, what the card name is, blah, 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 how many clips. You got your battery situation here. You can read the voltage and if it's a supported battery, you can read how much battery you've got left. So 76%. Um, all about the camera status. Is there something wrong with the uh, firmware or the software? Um, you can see uh, your camera name and what firmware version you're on. I'm actually on 1.7.0 beta, I think. There has been a lot of updates to this camera since then, so I should update this camera. Um, we also got your project uh, settings, you got your format, you got your time base, um, you got your recording frame rate and all that good stuff, and if you're running a lot or a CDL on here. They also give you um, information about your lens and it changes according to if you um, zoom in with your zoom lens and it even gives you how like where it's focused which is pretty cool I, th I find that really cool 
It also gives you the Wi-Fi password. So this runs is on ad, ad hoc mode. I pretty much always run my camera on ad hoc mode. And the most important part, which I use this one for is uh, sensor calibration. If you go, if you press that, you can go to the calibration menu and just tap calibrate uh, when you want to cal calibrate that. So that's a really handy feature because you almost always need to calibrate break this when you come on set. So usually what I just do is I click on here, I scroll down here, I scroll down here and I press calibrate um, for that to happen. So yeah, that's super useful. And this whole menu is super useful as well. Okay, um, now we've made it through the first screen. Of course, if you press this A button, uh, it will start recording. And if you press it again, it will stop recording. Let's go into the menu. Um, there's a lot of pages here. Um, for this video not to be an hour long, I will not go through all the pages. Um, it's pretty easy uh, to know what you want to do after you have some time with this camera. But like the most important things, let's say you're f tomorrow you have uh, a shoot with the Komodo, what do you need to know how to do? Okay, um, start by going off to image LUT. Here you have all your basic settings. Um, the one I would look at is how you want to monitor this image. Do you have a LUT or do you want to view the Rec. 709 image um, with red um, colors or do you want to view it just like log or something like that? And that's how you choose this output color space. If you have a LUT, just go white or to red, white, gamut, RGB. If you don't have a LUT, go to Rec. 709. Okay, because if I go to red wide gamut RGB and I don't have a 3D LUT or a CDL enabled, um, what I'm going to see is when I go back is a log image. But if I go here and I equip a LUT, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see a contrasty image with the LUT on it. But if I don't have a LUT or I don't want to use any of the LUTs, I can just go to image, uh, I can change this one to rec 709, boom, and then you have your output tone map and your highlight roll off options. So you can dial in basically what you're looking at on the monitor. Now it does, uh, it's also important to remember to turn off the 3D LUT. Um, if it is a 3D LUT for, for the uh, red white gamut RGB. So here we have uh, just a normal image. Um, and this does not matter what you set these things to. It just matters when you're looking at the image on set. So all of these, when shooting in raw, it doesn't matter. It's not going to be baked into the image. When it comes on your PC, it's just red, white, gamut, RGB, log footage. So that doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want to it afterwards. But, you know, for monitoring, it's super important. Okay, project settings. This one is probably the most important one. What format are you going to be recording in? So we have the 6K 17 by 9, which is the full sensor. Now keep in mind, whenever you change this format, it is just going to crop in the sensor. So um, if you go to all formats here, you can scroll down. There's a lot of options here. Now what it's going to do here, it, it's, it's going to just crop into the sensor. But things to know about this is anamorphic. You can choose your anamorphics with different de-squeezes here. Super useful for anamorphics. Um, and if you just want different kind of 6K options, they got that there. But if you want to run more frames, uh, for example, 60 frames per second, I think, you can go to 4K here and 120 for the 2K. But usually I don't see any reason to not keep it on 6K 17 by 9. You get that little bit of extra room on the sides um, if you need it in post. And it's just I just leave it at that at most times because it just makes a lot of sense. And then the next important thing is the file format. You can do ProRes, but I always do R3D. I've never shot a single ProRes clip with this camera. Um, R3D quality. We have a four options these days. Um, ELQ is for something like web stuff. LQ is for like music videos, stuff like that. MQ is for like shorts, narratives, um, commercials, and high qualities like VFX shots or like, I don't know, if you're f shooting a feature film and you somehow need that much data, 
I would shoot m all most of my like super important stuff on MQ, um, most of the stuff that are not that important LQ, and all my own stuff in ELQ. So um, that's how I would probably go about it. But you can choose whatever you want. It's just going to take a lot more space. And you can see this time changing here when you change the format. So that will be how much is on your card. Uh, you can set the pre-record modes here if you're doing like nature photography or something like that. Um, frame rate limits. Um, I've never used that function, but I'm sure someone wants to use that. So you can set a number of frames uh, that the next image is going to be. And those are the most important things you have to know about this. Media. This is also good. You have an eject button. You don't always have to use that. If the camera's off, you can just take the card off. Um, but secure format is right here and you can format the card because you're going to be doing that probably. Uh, presets, you can create like different camera presets, but I don't really fuck with that either. Communication uh, and connections here. You can set up your Wi-Fi um, to connect um, your phone into the camera. It's super straightforward um, to do, honestly. Uh, you just want to make sure the camera is in ad hoc mode. If you don't have an existing Wi-Fi that you're going to be um, connecting to ad hoc means that it makes its own Wi-Fi and maintenance. If you need to calibrate your monitor, uh, calibrate your sensor, you can do it over there. Uh, that's pretty much what you need to know. Audio guys might need to know about the time code, uh, where you're going to get it from. You can choose it here um, and jamming ses uh, settings and stuff like that and how to display that time code. Um, and if you're changing a microphone source, that's where you do it. But you can also do it in the menu I showed you before. So yeah, that's pretty much all you need to know about this camera. Um, let's go over some of the ports really quick and then uh, you guys will have a really good idea of how to work with this camera on set. So first of all, this is the camera from the side. And here we have a uh, mic jack. We have a headphone jack. We have the exhaust uh, of the camera. And then we have our media bin here. If you press this button, the media card will be shooting out and you get a media card and you can plug it back in like this. And there is a light for your CFAST card. When it is in use, it will be um, doing stuff. Then we go over to the backside. Let me flip this a little bit. Here you have all your important ports. Uh, you have a couple of battery places. Uh, here we have one red volt battery attached to the Canon BP mounts. Um, we have one external port here. You can attach a bunch of shit through this port. We have an SDI 12G um, and then we have a DC in. So this is for power. So this is image power and basically everything else. OK, moving on to this side, you basically have your on off switch. Uh, you have your Wi-Fi antenna and your record button down here. And uh, I think this is where the air comes in from. Uh, so those are two ports you don't really want to be blocking at the front of the camera. You basically have nothing. It's just a lens mount. So yeah, going back to the top of the camera, we have a menu button, which also acts as back button. Um, we have um, up and down buttons, which you can use to navigate this menu. I never do. You can also lock the touch screen. So, you know, when you try to press something, it's showing up that lock button right there. Uh, and you can unlock it by just holding these down um, like that. So you can hold those down to lock the screen and you can hold those to unlock it. You have the select button, which is basically you select something out of the menu. Actually, one thing I really wanted to touch upon quickly is the playback feature. This we will, you'll be using for sure. So press that button over there or go to your red control app and uh, press the playback button. Um, you can see the playback of your latest clip here, and it will show you information about that, the traffic light and the waveform at that time and all your FPS and even your sounds um, on here. So you can check if you know you recorded sound, you can check um, what your exposure was, what FPS you were on um, and stuff like that. You can even listen to it from the headphone port. And then when you click this uh, icon on the bottom left, uh, you can scroll down to uh, your clip lists. Now here it will show you uh, a bunch of clips that uh, you have on your card and uh, it will show you information about those clips. So if you click on the clip, 
It will show you more information about the click, uh, clip, which you can uh, scroll through. And when you press load, it will load up that clip for playback. And you will have um, all the information here and you can view the clip back. Um, and you can scroll through the clip uh, with this uh, scroll wheel, wheel, or you can use these things to skip on to the next clip um, and stuff like that. So you have lots of options here on how to uh, do things. I actually don't know what the fuck these buttons. I Yeah, I don't know what those buttons do. But anyway, uh, if you want to go back here, back from here, you might think, oh, menu button. No, it, it actually brings you to the menu. So what you want to do is just press that play button again, and it will bring you back uh, into the normal view. So yeah, I think that's my overview of the Red Komodo. Uh, that's how this camera works. I hope this uh, gave you some clarity on the stuff uh, about this camera. And if you have any questions, just leave them down in the comments. I'll try to answer them as fast as possible so you guys can get to work with this camera.